There's been some exciting news in the RC hobby for fixed wing FPV pilots. There's going to be a new Sonic model model, the AR Wing Pro. So let's take a quick look at the specs and what can we learn from the initial images so far? Will it meet our expectations? So here we have the new AR Wing Pro. This is obviously a, a render from the 3D model, but you can already see that it's it's got similarities to the original AR Wing, such as the, the little camera pod on the side for your FPV camera. Um, and yeah, the general shape is well, it's, it's a flying wing, isn't it? They're all gonna be a similar shape, but we can see you know, it's, it's a lot sleeker than the old AR Wing. So hopefully we'll get a lot more flight efficiency out of it. Um, you can also see that this has actually been developed with support from Painless 360. So from watching Lee's video, he's been you know on and off in discussions with Sonic Model throughout the process. They they ask you know what do you like? What can we do to improve this? And he's been giving response, which you know I think for a company like Sonic Model, you know ZOHD and Sonic Model, same company effectively. To actually go out to people and say, you know, tell us what you think, what would work really well. I think that's that's a great sign for, for companies in general. Yeah, I think it's a really good move. Let's have a, a quick look. So this is just a general overall image and we'll, we'll get on to the specifics. But, you know, I think it looks nice. I, I really like the sleek fuselage. It looks uh, like it could be a lifting fuselage as well. So, you know, even more efficiency. There's some things that I'm not too keen on, but we'll get onto that later. But overall, I think it looks really good. So let's get in onto the next image. I'm just gonna leave that there for a second. So if you wanna pause the video and read it, it's up to you, but I'm just gonna skip on. I mean, you can see on the profile actually that there's it's a much sort of lesser angle at the bottom than it is on the top. So I'd say that it is probably a lifting fuselage. So here we go, we've, we've got some first basic specs and it's running a 2216-1400 kV motor. So I would guess that this is going to be a sunny sky motor because as I said, it is ZOHD Sonic model. So ZOHD has started using sunny sky pretty much for everything. So I'd assume that it's going to be a sunny sky motor. The size and specs are definitely something that they can supply easily. They've got a folding prop on here. I would imagine that it just comes with a standard prop rather than a folder. And to be honest, there's no real need for a folder. It's less efficient. It, you know, if you put your ESC brake on, you, you won't ever break a prop landing. So there's really no real requirement for a folder unless you're going to get up high and turn the engine off and, you know, glide it a lot. That's the only real reason for it. But even then you could set your brake so it's, strong enough to stop the prop but weak enough so that the prop will actually level in line with the body until the body is actually blocking the wind to stop the prop spinning and then it, it just keeps it nice and level so whether it comes with a folder or not i i don't know but it doesn't really matter if it doesn't it, it'd actually probably be better the prop size is a bit weird eight by five usually with this size motor it would be an eight by six and it's got uh two nine gram metal geared servos which again, I find weird. Lee also mentioned that it's metal geared, but I believe someone pointed out that in the video, it's actually got plastic geared servos in. And at nine gram weight, you'd expect them to be plastic gears. Um, the metal gears are usually 12 or 13 grams for the same physical size servos. Uh, if it says metal geared, it should be, but I'd imagine they'll actually be 12 gram servos. So for battery recommendations with a LiPo, they're saying 4S 3.2 to 3.5 amp hour. And for a lithium pack, they've actually got it down as a 4S two-piece 7000, which is huge. You'll, you'll fly for days with that. So quite, quite a good range of options there. And as we'll see later on, the actual bay is huge. So I'm, I'm guessing that it's the uh, lifting weight that's limiting that, that specification. So what I do want to mention quickly is I've actually known that this model was coming out for a while now. I was in a conversation with Steve Schlesinger, Mark Hoffman, myself, and a, a guy who used to be at ZOHD Sonic Model, and he actually mentioned this model was coming out to us. We got onto it because Steve was basically saying, can you make an AR wing but 1200 millimeters wide? 
that that was <laughs> one thing he really wanted. And then, um, yeah, the, the guy we were speaking to said, well, actually, <laughs> it's not 1200, but we've got something coming out. We could, he couldn't give us too many details, but we knew it was going to be bigger than the current wingspan, but less than 1.2 meters. And it was going to have extra bays in, in the top, that sort of thing. So it's come out and it's, we sort of guessed it would be about a meter. So this is now giving us the, uh, the weights as well. So 340 grams empty, 500 grams with the power pack. So let's go through and have a bit more. Ah, here we go. So they've actually provided quite nice detail on this model, which is great. There's, there's a lot of stuff that I, I see on here, but you never really get. So it's, it's actually got an approximate stall speed of 31 kilometers of an, an hour. Obviously, depending on your setup, your weight is going to vary slightly, but it's nice that they've actually put a speed where you can, you know, think I, I've got to watch it now. So they've got a maximum speed with uh, their power combo, 130 kilometers an hour. Yeah, I'm sure you put a bigger motor on, you can go faster. Um, I know the original AR wing Mark has gone quite quick with that. And I believe Glenfoe went even quicker. <laughs> so you can get a lot of speed out of the originals, depending on your, your, your setup. But they're saying with the basic setup, you're looking at 130 kilometers an hour top end and around 75 to 80 kilometers an hour cruise speed. So you're looking at around 80 miles an hour for the maximum speed, which is actually, yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty slow, but if it's made as a cruiser, it's not too bad. And a cruise speed of about 50 miles an hour, about 45 to 50. So again, it, it would be nicer if it could cruise quicker and cover more ground. Um, and that's at five and a half amp. So I don't know, maybe the power power setup could be tweaked to get that a bit better. But then, yeah, this is all stuff that we can find out. To actually put this basic information on there is pretty nice. So the maximum, this is a good one, the maximum structural integrity speed is 220 kilometers an hour, which is 125 or 124 miles an hour, which yeah, is, is decent enough. But I think if you could get, you know, a maximum speed of about 100 miles an hour, cruise speed of about 60, 65 miles an hour, you have a nice, decent model, which can actually get places quite quickly. And, you know, where it's a bit sleeker now, it might, might be achievable, but we'll see. So yeah, there we have the maximum takeoff weight of 1425 grams so from the 500 grams uh, initial weight of of the model you've got about 920 grams to play with for batteries which you can fit a lot in there for that so that's really cool so this is what i really like to see I mean, most people put reflex in, so we've got one and a half to two millimeters, which is actually not a lot of reflex. It's, you know, maybe it's going to be less than the thickness of the uh, Elevon. So that's really not a lot of reflex. So it must be built into the wing to begin with. But it's got maximum throws, which I hardly ever see. I've seen it on like the Strix Goblins and the Nano Goblins, but you see it on a lot of traditional models. So like if you buy an Acro Watt or something like that, they always give you the throws, but you hardly ever see it on foam kits. And it's not a great idea to leave that information out because you see quite often people that are new to the hobby build it, just put massive, massive throws on things and end up in trouble. So having a recommended throw is a great idea so thank you very much sonic model for that let's get on to the next thing i'm guessing that these measurements here are actually centimeters not millimeters and this ties in with uh, what the guy at zohd was telling us is they're limited by the box size so they could make these models as big as they want you know as far as the molds and everything go but the packaging needs to be within a certain size because if you jump up to the next level it apparently doubles or triples the price of actually sending it out <laughs> And that's quite a limiting factor because if you're wanting to pay, you know, say $80 or whatever it is for a model, if to go, you know, from this one meter wingspan to 1.2 meters, that could then jump up to about 100 to $120 just because of the packaging costs or the shipping costs. So anyway, that's, that's the limiting factor. But it was also mentioning here that they're going to have a premium combo in the future with a T-motor. They've got nothing about what size that might be. So it could be a physically bigger motor as well. Uh, maybe a 2814 or something like that. But there, there's going to be another op motor option in the future. 
So again, I'm not going to read all this. There we go. I'll leave it up for a few seconds. If you want to pause it and read it, you can. So now we're on to this section. And this, to be honest, is good and bad. This has actually got my first gripe with it. So you can see it's really nice and easy to put together. You've got the wings just slot in. You've got a single screw to hold the wings in. And you have got a multi-pin connector. But it's actually this connector that I'm a little disappointed with. We first saw this on the ZOHD, uh, it was either the Talon GT or the Dart XL. And they have these six pin connectors. And I, I brought it up at that point, but six pins for what we have these days is not really enough. You have three that are taken up by the servos. So that leaves only three pins left. And if you, you know, you could probably get away with it if you've just got a receiver with F port, for example. So let's take an example of a VTX. So we, ha we have our servos. So we have a ground power and the signal and the, the power is going to be five or six volts, depending on what these servos can take. That's one spec I've not seen yet. It'd be nice if the servos can handle six volts. Um, so you have ground power, which is going to be five or six volts and the signal. For the VTX, you're going to want the power because on the VTX, it's going to be a minimum of seven volts unless you're, you know, you can run a low power five volt VTX, but most people for this type of model won't. They'll be running either around sort of off of a flight controller. It's about nine or eight or nine volts. The power you get off of most you know, sort of Matek wing boards. So it'll be over seven volts. If they're running 1.2, it'll be usually 12 volts, depending on what uh, VTX they're using. So that power cannot be shared. You've got a ground pin, which you could potentially share, but I would worry about induced noise from the servos getting into the video signal. So for video, I wouldn't want to share any of the power with the, the servo. So you have power and ground, which leaves one pin here for the signal. So you could put your picture to it. That's fine. It will work. But what if you want smart audio? What if you want to put a microphone to it? What if you want to put the power from the VTX straight to the camera rather than using the flight controller's power? So there's, there's a lot of things that are missing potentially from this. You could probably get away with it, but it would be nice if this was a nine pin connector. And I think... Ideally, that's what I'd like to see in the future from these uh, ZOHD and Sonic models is an, a nine pin wing connector because, you know, the concept is brilliant. Just plug the wings in, job done. But I think it could do with a few more extra connections. So what I'm going to bring up is this connector here. Now, this is actually on an Alba bird, but you can see in, in the center here, it's got nine pins. It's got these two big pins because this is actually powering a motor as well. So you have main power through here for your, your motor to go to your ESC, but you have nine, sig nine effectively signal pins in a connector that doesn't actually look any bigger in reality. It looks similar sort of size to a multiplex connector. Something like that would be ideal. So maybe in the future, ZOHD Sonic model can have a look at that sort of thing. But that's so far as my only gripe. So next up, we can see that it actually comes with two hatches. One is for the DJI system. So if you're running the DJI, then it, they've already thought of you. You can just plug it straight on. It's nice and simple. Even the front hatch has been designed for the DJI stuff. Uh, the other hatch has got a nice big NACA duct on it. The actual attachment looks very similar to the Mini AR wing. So you can see the Mini AR wing has got the same sort of prongs on the front. So magnets at the back. That looks very similar. It's all, you know, it's all stuff that we're used to. It works well. Why not? Why change it? So let's carry on. As you can see, there's the DJI nose cone. It's got a wire or a, a hole for the cable in the top, which you can see here. So this is another potential downside with this model. You can see here, they've got the GoPro. So what they got, that's a Hero 5. So the standard five, six, sevens will all fit. Whether the eight will fit, maybe, maybe not. But it looks like they've got a slot here for a strap. To, to hold it down but there's not a lot of protection that's the only downside i can see is you've only got this bit here what would be nice if, if there's an stl like they could have made this hole a little bigger maybe so you could get some foam around it 
I mean, you, you probably could with a session size camera and they, they do supply a blank nose, which I think that's no, got a camera on it, but there, there is a blank nose. So you could potentially cut that out for a, a GoPro session. So that size camera would fit. That size is really exposed, but I think what would be the ideal, and unfortunately they're showing it on the top here, but what would be ideal is if you could cut behind this camera and put a run cam two style flat aerodynamic camera you know straight in the nose looking out of that hole i think that would be the best solution because then you've got this lovely aerodynamic shape you have a camera in there that's well protected and you can record you know 4k with the new run cam i, I wish more camera companies would produce cameras in this form factor rather than you know these huge GoPro style things. I mean, I, I can understand why for this sort of thing, it's, it's just a generic action cam. They use it on everything from drift cars, mountain bikes, skiing, anything. They don't care about the size. This size is, you know, obviously a derivative, but it's, you know, quad pilots use it because it's, they, they don't care about aerodynamics. They don't care if there's a brick on the front of their, their quad. So they'll use this size or even this size. But for us with wings, if we can get a nice aerodynamic camera, that would be ideal. So yeah, this, this form factor camera in the front would be perfect, which I'm sure we could probably do with cutting a bit of foam, which, you know, we do quite a lot anyway. All right. So here's the, the run cam hatch and you can actually put the camera through just with the cable. And as we say, here's the standard analog camera, which will go into the side, just like the original. So here's the side ducts. Now I've spoken to a couple of people and in regard to the wing connectors and they say, well, why not just put your VTX in here and your receiver in there? And I just like to run as much separation as possible. If, if you're looking for the best signals, you run as much separation as possible. And we'll see in a minute, they've actually put bays in the wing for that. So that is, it's a bit disappointing that there's bays in the wing and the connector doesn't really cope with it but it's nice to see they've given options of putting extra stuff in here you know you could potentially cut this out a bit more maybe and put a different camera in there but you know there's there's airflow but we'll get onto airflow later um but yeah it's, it's a nice size little bay and if you want to use them for your vtx and receiver you can but i prefer a bit more separation so this is just a picture of the bottom and we can see here the extra bays. Oh, so here's the screws to screw the wings on, just two screws. It's not from inside anymore. It just holds them in and just stops them pulling apart. So that's great. And you can see the cable here for the wing mounted bays, which is where personally I would put my VTX and receiver and maybe on the receiver side, a little bit of lead or something just to balance out the, the, uh, the, the lateral balance. Yeah, I put the VTX this side opposite the camera because obviously it's not going to be a lot of weight, but you've got a bit more weight that side. Put the receiver this side because it's lighter. But yeah, the, the, the biggest problem with that concept is the connectors. But it's nice that it's all thought of and gives people options. So here's the bays and you can see they're absolutely huge. They've actually shaved a bit away in here for the battery. Yeah, in all honesty, you could fill this with batteries. I mean... I'm guessing the CG is going to be around about here somewhere. So you could put batteries right on the CG. It won't affect the weight at all. Just use this front area for balance and, you know, fill up the rest as, as your heart's content. And then it's got a nice big area here, which is going to have your ESC and your flight controller potentially. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of room here for a flight controller as well. And you can just about see on the image, that there's like slots here. And that's for the cables to pass through. It's all been thought of really nicely. So this is the one thing that I is they're showing all this airflow, which is brilliant, but it's not all that it, it's cracked up to be because what you want with airflow is the inlet. You want an outlet about four times the size of the inlet to get a decent amount of air through. Otherwise, the, air, the outlet is just restricting what is coming in. So it's showing all this nice airflow, but in reality, you're restricted to these four outlet vents here. So even with that nice big inlet with that on the, the standard uh, cover, if you don't run the DJI, 
you're still only going to get the airflow in that those two can let out. You know, it's it's a nice concept, but it's in reality, it's not going to be as good. So you're going to have still a bit of po positive pressure in there. So these hatches maybe will pop up if the magnets aren't strong enough. Uh, so that's the only thing that I'm going to point out here is that the outlets aren't the equivalent of what air can get rammed into it. So let's carry on. So we've got some reinforcements i'm guessing this is like a carbon plate in the bottom it doesn't actually say what it is i've i've looked on the uh on the descriptions but i can't see it anywhere you can see it. you've got the slots here for your cable management the carbon spar actually goes between the two uh sections so it's it doesn't encroach on any of the bays and you can actually see it's got this little lump on the top of this bay for your gps I would probably mount mine in one of these because I don't like the idea of having a GPS on something you can remove. So let's have another look at the next page. So here we can see that they've actually used really nice, decent ball links. If you have seen the, the Durafly Goblin, where they put those horrible, cheap plastic ball links on, those ball links are designed for slow, low torque circumstances. So on that model, it was completely unsuitable. And what they should have actually done is put something like this on. So this looks like a really nice, good quality ball joint that won't just pop off. So they're showing CA hinges. Now, I believe they come with a model, but it's an option of whether you want to use them or not. I believe it's a standard foam hinge from the factory. But if you want to cut the Elevon off and use the, um, the CA hinges, you can. If you're going to do that, though, if you're going for that sort of high performance, maybe put... Um, Bolsa Elevons on. And yeah, so lastly, we've got a few photos. So as you can see, this this is not the render. This is the genuine pictures. And you can see that they've gone for the internal bay for the VTX. And the, um, looks like either R9 or Crossfire, they've put on the hatch lid, which again, I don't think I would do. It's, it's, if you're going to be taking that on and off, it seems a bit weird to me. They've mounted it horizontally as well, which is not the best for range, but it's, you know, as long as your transmitter antenna is horizontal, it's fine. But you can see nice details. Like I, I like this swoop on the top of the, um, the winglets and it, it, it looks nice. You can't quite see it, but there's like different colored checkered pattern on the bottom there on the leading edge. And that looks pretty cool. There we have it. There's the AR wing pro. Are you going to pre-order one? I'm tempted. It does look good. I do like the shape of it. And it will be really interesting to see how it flies. So if you are interested, I'll put a link in the uh, video description. So you can just go there, pre-order it. So the price at the moment, I'm seeing $79 on the pre-order up for the first 100 items. And it will go up to well, $88.99. And this is for the kit. So the plug and play is $119 looking to go up to $129. So I'll put the link in the description. It's looking like it's going to ship on or before the 30th of October. So there's about a week to go. Leave, leave a comment. Tell me what you think of this model. What, what are you looking forward to? Are there anything that concerns you? Let me know. See you on the next video, guys. Thanks. Bye bye. And you can see that it's still retaining, you know, features that we know, such as the the little knob, <laughs> the little knob, 